Ukraine wants peace talks, but their likely scheme excludes direct talks with Putin, writes the influential American publication Politico, emphasizing that the Ukrainian army's invasion of Russia strengthens Kiev's position in the issue of peace talks. They can be held even in conditions when the Kremlin refuses to send its diplomats to face-to-face -to -face meetings, the journalists emphasize. The model for a peace pact, increasingly discussed in Kiev, has its roots in a July 2022 agreement that allowed Ukraine to resume grain exports through the Black Sea. Under that diplomatic format, Russia and Ukraine worked on separate agreements under the supervision of the UN and Turkey as mediators without a direct agreement between Moscow and Kiev. Turkey makes no secret of its desire to once again act as a mediator in reaching a peace agreement. In Kyiv, they believe that the lightening attack on the Kursk region has strengthened Ukraine's position in the negotiations. In the Kursk region, we clearly see how a military instrument is being used to convince Russia to enter into an honest negotiation process, said Mykhailo Podolyak, advisor to the head of the office of the president of Ukraine. However, Putin insists that he is not in the mood for negotiations. The Black Sea model could help break this impasse, two senior officials told Politico. This is the plan we are striving for, said an official close to the Ukrainian president's office, speaking on condition of anonymity. At the core of what Ukraine wants is a 10-point plan developed by President Volodymyr Zelensky in 2022. Now that format has been accelerated, the head of the president's office and Zelensky's top foreign policy official, Andriy Yermak, said 10 working groups, including ambassadors and experts, are being created to develop action plans and deadlines. Yermak also cited the Black Sea deal as an example of a potential format. We did not negotiate with Russia. We negotiated with Turkey and the UN, and they negotiated with Russia. It was a success. The corridor operated for a year. There were many problems, but it worked. We must admit this. A similar format can be used again, but Kyiv has a long way to go. It must develop a joint peace plan with countries that have agreed to help it implement the three initial points of the peace formula agreed upon at the first peace summit in Switzerland. A Ukrainian official has said that the Ukrainian army's recent incursion into Russia's Kursk region is first of several stages in taking the fight to the capital, Moscow. We see only part of this operation. In the future, we will see several stages. Head of the military administration in the Ukrainian city of Sumy, Oleksiy Drozdenko, told The Guardian, adding that the Kursk operation was not like previous raids. Drozdenko said he had been closely involved in the Kursk operation's planning, but said he could not say too much about it because there was more to come. The official did not provide any further details about Ukraine's military plans. Furthermore, he noted that hundreds of Russian soldiers have been captured since the incursion into Kursk on Tuesday the 6th of August, while the Ukrainian army has suffered minimal losses. Sometimes there are more than 100 or 150 prisoners of war a day. Drozdenko said, while speaking about the offensive in Kursk, which became the largest scale attack on Russian territory since the start of the war in February 2022. He added that Russian troops do not want to fight Ukrainians. The cross-border attack on Kursk was a complete surprise to the Kremlin, which believed Ukraine would fight to defend its own territory, Drozdenko stressed. The military official praised the Ukrainian army's success in Kursk so far, stressing that hospitals in northeastern Ukrainian city of Sumy reported low numbers of casualties and injuries during the operation. On the first day of the operation, there were only 15 casualties, he claimed. 60, 70% of them were very light, caused by bomb damage, shrapnel. Sumy is the Ukrainian city closest to the incursion and had been closely involved in the operation's planning. With the population of 250,000, Sumy city had not been involved in the hostilities since the early days of the war. However, the incursion into Kursk has brought the war back to Sumy and the border areas to the north with renewed air, missile and artillery strikes. When we speak about seven months of 2024, January to July, there were approximately 400 strikes to border areas. But last week we had 200 strikes in only one week, Drozdenko said. 
Two people were injured after a ballistic missile landed in a street on Saturday. Sumi has been protected by air defense with interceptions and launches heard and seen from the city center over the last week.